Hello everyone, welcome to Field Notes, an exploration of functional medicine. I'm Rob Downey, a family practice MD and Institute for Functional Medicine certified practitioner. I'm coming to you from Seaworthy Functional Medicine in Homer, Alaska. Seaworthy exists to help people overcome their health challenges and be fully Today vital. We are fortunate enough to be joined by Jacob Werner, the head beekeeper at Stoked Beekeeping Company in Homer, Alaska. Welcome, Jacob. Hey, how how you doing? I'm great to be here. I'm delighted that you joined us. This is a total blast today to get to speak to a local beekeeper and talk about your company and Stoked Honey, which I first tasted up at a mindfulness retreat that's held here every summer. And so it's kind of nice that in terms of the uh, first exposure was just this feeling of, oh, this is delicious honey to put in my tea. <laughs> so. It is. And I'll, I'll have to tell you that when I came up here in July is the first time I've ever had fireweed honey. And it is by far equal to or greater than the, my, the, the honey that I've had from all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. And I looked on the website today and the kinds of commentary that I saw about the, the, what, um, the aroma of honey and what it does to one's palate. These were the kinds of notes I would often see accompany a wine. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a huge influence and it actually adds a little bit of a tasting experience because you read it and you're like, Oh wow. And then you get an opportunity also to add your own perspective to the taste and flavor of the honey as well. Right. Right. Well, what a wonderful place to start just with uh, chatting a little bit about the sort of, wonderfulness of the the honey itself. So I saw in your bio, Jacob, that you got a degree in business from Alaska Pacific University, and you've been a beekeeper all over North America and in France. Is that That's correct. accurate? Yeah. I, my very first introduction to beekeeping was um, in Indiana. My grandparents owned a blueberry farm, so they kept bees for pollination of the blueberries, got out of it, Grew up, went to school, got a degree in business management. I worked for Marriott International for 13 years, moved to California and decided I was done working inside. It was starting to weigh on me. I was probably a good 40 pounds overweight, just being inside all the time, not being able to get out and be active. So when I got on with a commercial beekeeper. So when I talk about commercial, my grandparents raised bees for the blueberries. I'm dealing with almond pollinations or vine seeds. So we're talking cucumbers, zucchini, squash, watermelons, sunflowers, things of that nature. So we're running, my grandparents were running maybe six hives at the biggest. The company I were, my very first company was running anywhere from 3000 to 5,000 hives. So it was a wow. big job. <laughs> yeah, that's a I've had some amazing opportunities to work with some great commercial beekeepers and some small time beekeepers as well. I've been commercial beekeeping for about eight years right now. Mm -hmm. And didn't you mention the other day that it was serendipitous that this opportunity came up with Stoked? It was. It was very. It was a very unique opportunity. I actually came to Alaska working for a company in California. They were running about fifteen hundred hives, a majority focus on pollination, so almond pollination. Um, and then they do some honey on the side, but a lot of queen breeding as well. So we're talking about queen bees um, mm -hmm. that they sell to other beekeepers to build colonies or more colonies. And I came up here to look at a company that was for sale or that still is for sale up in Fairbanks. And so while I was up here, I was like, well, you know, it's been, you know, probably 10 years since I've been in Alaska. Let's travel as much as I can and revisit the places that I've been. Came down to Homer, had the opportunity to stop at the farmer's market and of course, as a beekeeper, you always go to where the honey is. So I stopped at the two stalls that were selling honey. Met James. I liked the product. I liked him. I liked the logo. He, right after I got done talking to him, he was like, I, you know, of course, you know, we back and forth about talking about bees. He said, do you want a job? And I was like, of course, always looking. Uh, he was like, well, give me a call in the spring and I couldn't even wait. So I got home. I, I got back to California, waited two weeks and called him right away. and was like, I know a fireweed's getting ready to bloom. Are you going to need some help with some fireweed, honey? And he was <laughs> like, yeah, come up tomorrow. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> 
it parallels a lot of neat stories I've gotten yeah. to hear over the years about how people arrive in and stay in and love Homer. Yeah, it was it. And I mean, I've been a Homer a few times, but obviously just to go out on charters and things like that, I hadn't put any like significant time here. But Homer is one of my favorite places and we have a really unique property here for stoked right on sterling highway just up the hill from the homer proper and our view is amazing as i'm sitting here talking to you i'm looking out over the bay and i'm just like every morning i wake up to this and i'm just like why would you live anywhere else <laughs> me too the amount of gratitude is just overwhelming at at the beauty and the smell of this place and the seasons and the wild things. <clears throat> and I want to use that as a segue into something that's blown my mind twice now, which is that I think that Stokes website is so effective because the first image is this drone shot of this incredible wildflower um, fireweed uh, crimson everywhere yeah and then this truck coming through to the hives and then the drone shot goes up and so the last view is this thing expanding out and that carpet of fireweed is unbelievable yeah i i love to say so when i first came up here we just finished up our wildflower extract like we just started pulling honey from the wildflower so we moved all our hives down here to homer got them into the wild or the fireweed. And my first experience was driving that exact yard. And so I got to see it firsthand from the website to in person. And every day that the fireweed was blooming, that I was going there, I was just like, I cannot believe this is my job. This is amazing. <laughs> That's really cool. So Let's talk about the health benefits of honey. And I've been looking into that too. And that's one of the things I've been looking forward to most. A lot of functional medicine, pe people who are interested in functional medicine, they're intrigued by, uh, you know, know your farmer, local things, et cetera. And there's so many dimensions of Stoke that just, that, that just check all the boxes in terms of a local business then helps the community and vice versa. But, um, the, the honey and other products that come from bees are just fascinating. So what's your take on the health benefits of honey? So with honey, I mean, we can go into multiple types of honey. And obviously, I'm sure a majority of the listeners have heard of Manuka honey and the health benefits. You know, unfortunately, there was, I think it was two years ago, there was a huge problem with some of the Manuka that was coming over from Australia that there is two types of plants, Manuka and the Manuki I think I'm not exactly sure. So there was some issues with that. When we're talking about like North American honey, um, we're dealing with a huge amount of vitamins that are in honey, especially if you're getting it the raw product, unfiltered or just gravity filtered or naturally filtered and unpasteurized. That's one thing that a majority of people don't understand is once you pasteurize the honey, you're losing a majority of the health benefits that are from the natural honey. When you go to your grocery store, and I mean, I don't want to dog on any product, but any kind of off brand or name brand, like we go to Kirkland to Costco and you're buying the raw local honey, but it has to be pasteurized because it has to pass those tests. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you're dealing with honey from multiple, let's call them growers, basically. Um, so it has to be pasteurized. Uh -huh. So any heating honey above 120 degrees, you're losing all of those vital benefits from the from the honey naturally oh that's so interesting and i saw on the website that this is raw which a lot of folks are going to be familiar with Correct. and so uh for for me and the audience who i thank for joining us today how do we understand that better then am i am i hearing you correctly that there's a way then as a local producer that you're able to safely market uh, without pasteurization. Am I hearing that correctly? That's correct because honey does not, I mean, it doesn't go bad. First of all, it's shelf stable in its natural state. Mm -hmm. The bees are doing the work themselves. So when nectar, you're dealing with a high um, liquid content with nectar, the bees actually dehydrate the nectar and turn it into honey. 
So mm-hmm. once it's dehydrated, there's very little water content. So you're not going to deal with any spoilage or anything like that. So the only way that honey can go bad is if you is the jarring process. So we mm-hmm. obviously have to have a clean room to, in order to jar. We're constantly cleaning every piece of equipment that ever touches the honey. Um, so, and that's one thing when you're dealing with a huge bottling plant that they can't do. So they have to process or they have to pasteurize it. Got it. Also leaving it raw does allow it to crystallize and go into a natural state. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And uh, as I was learning about it via a number of different places, natural uh, medicines database and uh, the reference that you gave me, I mm-hmm. then it made it intuitive that the bees need these uh, antimicrobial and antifungal aspects to their process because, of course, they've got to have clean fuel and food and building supplies and safety for their young and uh, correct exactly and a lot of what so i mean if we just go down the list of ingredients or list of components that are health benefits from honey i mean we're de- dealing with vitamin b's um calcium magnesium potassium zinc all things that you know help the immune system muscle building Mm-hmm. digestion, bone health. Yeah. These yeah. are all things that are included in honey, especially in its raw form. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Including it anytime you do pasteurize it. Yeah. It's that was what the exact same system. when you're talking about eating raw versus cooking your vegetables, it's right. Exactly the same. Right. Absolutely. Thank you. I found that there are polyphenols in honey, which are natural antioxidants. Exactly. And exactly. last week I was fortunate enough to talk to a guy who inherited his grandfather's organic olive groves in Greece. And he was talking about the polyphenols in his family's olive oil. And I would flag these antioxidants in your product as a really super important thing for folks to reflect on because oxidative stress generates inflammation we can't feel in our bodies. And so when we quench that oxidative stress with natural antioxidants, then exactly. we're, we're winning. Exactly. Yeah. The easier the influence of a natural product, the better your health is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. One other thing I wanted to share and hear your take on was that uh, this doesn't get talked about as much necessarily, but uh, there's a group of things in functional medicine called demulcents. These are things that coat, soothe, and heal the gut. So the plants people have heard over and over again are slippery elm, marshmallow, um, aloe, et cetera. Sure. Um, but uh, it turns out that uh, raw honey is a demulcent. And so in this uh, period that we're dealing with COVID, then uh, there are some common sense reasons to think that honey supports our first of three firewalls against infections because that uh, mucosal layer of the gut, the sure. improve that first firewall against infections getting in. So there's just so many dimensions of honey that are interesting. Exactly. And I mean, if we look back into the past of the thousands and thousands of years of naturally treating illnesses or ailments, I mean, honey's been around for millennia and if they're using it and we're still using it now for the same, I mean, how, how many times have we seen honey mixed with tea for hundreds of years and we're still doing it for the exact same situation? Yeah. Yeah. I think when we find that it's a page from an old playbook for hundreds or thousands of years, that ought to really perk our ears up. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Wisdom traditions. Yeah. 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 I thought I should mention also that you, you had, I, I thought it was funny when we were chatting and you had mentioned you're a self-acknowledged bee nerd. And then I'm a self-acknowledged functional medicine nerd. Right. Yeah. Like, I think just meaning we really love these topics and. Oh, exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is, this part is part of, I think the reason that James brought me on is because I can sit and talk about it for hours and just, and we'll get on a topic and then I'll be like, well, well, if this is the case, then why can't this also be the case? And so if we use it for this, let's try it with this, you know, it's yeah. Yeah. And it right goes on. The same just in beekeeping as well. I mean, we look through the bees and we're talking about, um, 
it's a community based calling. I mean, they're, yeah. when people are talking about bees, they're like, oh, the bees are supporting the queen. And it's not really that case. Yes, the bees need to be there. The queen needs the bees. But in reality, the bees are there for the next generation. Mm. The current generation of honeybees is building just to grow the next generation. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I saw on the website and I'm hearing from you both. It's like this, uh, this beauty then of their life and life cycle uh, has these dimensions that can really bring out the best in ourselves in terms of how we think about our relationship to the world and one another. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, there's the saying that every three bites of food was at some point influenced by the honeybee or bees in general. So when we look at that aspect of it, we need to think about ourselves and how our influence is affecting our outside world. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. just that collaboration between us and the natural process and the natural world. I mean, we can't be in it without affecting it. We can't affect it without being in it. Yeah. Well said. Very well said. Well, as we segue into some of the other things that come from bees, I wanted to also just share with our audience that this antioxidant benefit, it translates to something that our local folks, they often will elect at the health fair to have one of these high sensitivity C-reactive proteins drawn or HSCRP. And that's a measure of silent inflammation in the body. And if it's under a certain level, studies have shown that people have lower risks of heart attack and stroke. Sure. And I was just reviewing a study to get ready for today's podcast that shows that raw honey reduces HSCRP. And so I wanted to share that as another neat kind of concrete example of the, the science of the benefits of honey. Exactly. What, that's one of the things that honey does really well is al allowing us to metabolize, you know, our amino acids, cholesterol, glucose, all of carbohydrates. I mean, if we're able to digest that and process that better, it is healthier for ourselves. Nice. So there's other things that come from bees and yeah. And I see that right now on, if somebody's ordering something from stoked, they maybe I have this, tell me if I have this correct, uh, they can order honey or they can order, is it pollen? Yes. Right now? We do collect bee pollen. We collect it three times a year. So we do an early pollen, a midsummer pollen, and then a late summer pollen mm -hmm. um, with the early summer pollen, you, you know, we're dealing with. So the way we think about it is if you get allergies early, mid, late summer, depending on when those allergies happen is due to the pollen content in the air. Uh -huh. So we like to tell people if depending on when those allergies happen, having a small, almost booster shot of pollen ingested allows you to basically build a tolerance towards the airborne pollen that you're breathing in every day. Uh -huh. And you had mentioned also when we were getting ready for today's podcast, you've been getting training in apotherapy. The, Correct. The yeah, that's going to be one of the things that hopefully we're going to be able to either offer or at least provide information to people where they can access that. Um, mm -hmm. Happy therapy is basically any kind of therapy from a bee product or from bees in general. Um, there's there are different. Um, places for therapy that you allow you to actually camp on top of a beehive to basically get you sense the vibration and also breathe the oxygen that is the bee oxygen basically so you're breathing in and then also feeling the feeling the energy of the hive that allows you to naturally like ingest it like mm. so remarkable and then we're also talking about therapies from venom, which would be um, helps with like arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. I know for a fact that my family tree has really bad joints in their hands um, that start right around my age. And I have not had any issues with my hands or like feeling sore in my hands because I work with them every day, but I also get stung every day. So mm -hmm. I'm constantly getting a therapy from the bees, mm -hmm. so, which is mm -hmm. one of those things that I always encourage people when they're working bees or want to start working bees. Obviously you want to make sure you're not allergic, but then making sure that you are spending enough time to actually 
physically get the presence of the bees and everything that they have to offer to you. Mm -hmm. And what are safety things people need to know about whether or not they might have a sting allergy or whether or not use of pollens could trigger too much of an immune response? Sure, of course. I mean, we never recommend anything over like a tenth of a teaspoon to start out with in terms of pollen. With bee venom, that's you any obviously any type of therapy you need to contact your physician, your medical assistant, because that is something that we have no control over. The bees have no control over yourself has no control over. Um, and obviously starting small and working your way up. I mean, I, myself, I mean, I eat a ton of pollen, but a ton to me is like a tablespoon. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I don't really go more. I wouldn't go more than that. Advise yeah. anybody to go more than that. Cause then you're starting to get digestion issues and things like that. Um, yeah. but in terms of venom, you know, once again, that has to be discussed with a medical professional. Mm -hmm. Um, I get stung more than once a day. I mean, obviously not right now, but throughout the summer, it's at least once a day, multi usually more than once a day. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but also my body has built an immunity to that. So I don't swell up anymore, you know, and I mean, I hate to say it like this, but you get the sense of the hive as well, working with them for so long, you know, when you are doing something right and when you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. So it allows you to sense the bees pretty mm -hmm. much. Um, yeah. Yeah. We, we definitely, we here in this house, James and I love our pollen. We mix it with smoothie smoothies. We put it on ice cream, salads. <laughs> we mix it with granola. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a good, it's a go-to thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. So I saw also then that you all reflect on the value of being a healthy local company. So Correct. Yeah. how do you think about the company relating to the community and vice versa and where is stoked going? So James is, I mean, he's an amazing person in general, but you know, he's been in the community his almost his entire life. Um, he's worked with some outreach programs here in Homer and with, and also throughout, you know, some of the lower 48 as well. Um, so our goal, as I've said before, I mean, first and foremost, we're in the community. We are for the community and we're by the community in terms of James. And I hope that at some point I can be considered at least a local Maybe not a Alaska, well, Alaska resident at least. Maybe not a local. <laughs> Maybe a <laughs> transplant, local transplant. <laughs> um, but, you know, our goals coming up, we are actually going to start doing tours here on the farm. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to start scheduling those here in the next month or so. And so we can offer visits to the hives, get the experience. We're going to have um, a hive site here on property the people can actually go in, look at the hive, find the queen, taste the honey directly out of the hive. Mm -hmm. And then we're also going to try to do tours around the farm, show them, you know, a little bit of our extraction opportunities, you know, a little bit of retail stop shop, but we really want to yeah. get people involved in the community. Also, we're hoping to start to do queen breeding mm -hmm. this coming season, which means that we'll be able to, um, take advantage of the local bee population. Obviously honeybees aren't native to North America. We brought over, brought them over from Europe, but because of where we're located in the weather, we want bees that can wild hives that can survive the winter. So mm -hmm. when we're dealing with queen breeding, the local drone population is a part of the genetic sequence and structure that we want to institute into our hives to get a better yearly production. Because a lot of people in Alaska that are running bees actually end up killing off their colonies before winter and just buying a new colony from California or the lower 48. Mm -hmm. So that's just introducing bees that aren't quite strong enough to last through the winter. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we, we want that to be a possibility, especially for hobbyists or people that have, you know, a few hives, having that genetic, that genetics to last through the winter is really it's important to me because i've worked for some queen breeders that are from quebec and british columbia 
And hopefully this season we'll get those genetics up here that allow us to build those strong genetics to last our seasons. Oh, I just think that's so interesting. I just think that's so great. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a very cool process. And watching queen breeding and being a part of it is super interesting. I saw on the website that James's sister has a passion for educating people about all of these different uh, aspects of beekeeping and yes, honey she does and- very much. She's she's kind of stepped away from it for the season uh, uh-huh. for a short period of time, you know. And she so, but we're trying to expand and grow. Yeah, yeah right on. Well, um, a lot of the fun of uh, of looking at the website was just that the images and the descriptions feel very vivid to me. Like mm-hmm. even the seeing the stoked bee logo against the backdrop of all these plants and flowers, I, yeah. I felt like, uh, uh, you know, okay, well, I've got a stoked uh, t-shirt in my future. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and that's, that was part of like what we wanted, you know, what James wanted in terms of the company logo and also the company in general, we don't want to take away from the natural beauty and the natural process that is beekeeping and bees and Alaska's beauty at all. Yeah. 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 Well, um, it, it's been, uh, just really neat, uh, getting to know about your company and knowing I'd get to talk to you as, as an expert. And I saw that you recommended, like, if there was one thing you thought was super important, it'd be to like visit it, visit an apiary, uh, you know, consider keeping bees. Yeah. You exactly. Wanna, I mean, like I said, we're going to try to do tours, but even just contacting your local honey grower, there's at least a few providers here in Homer. Um, and if they're not in here in Homer up in Anchorage, we know, I know a few up in the Valley and up in Fairbanks, um, just going to a farmer's market, talking to the beekeeper and asking beekeepers are usually super excited. Anytime anybody is interested (laughs) and anytime somebody's interested and they get to see it, they end up usually wanting to start their own hive. Yeah. I first started commercial beekeeping. I went back to Indiana and visited my family. I actually brought a queen for, because my uncle took over the farm. I brought a queen from California to my uncle in Indiana Mm -hmm. in my pocket. It was just, I flew with it. And uh, I requeened one of his hives that had lost their queen. So that was really cool. Being able to do, I mean, I'm not entirely sure it was legal, but um, but I brought it over and as soon as my mom saw me do it and I was in shorts and a t-shirt and no veil on when I was requeening this hive and she saw it all and she was full suited and she was like, well, when do I get my hive? When do I get my hive? <laughs> <laughs> That's the part about beekeeping that I know James and I both love is just, you know, the educational aspect and getting people excited, not only just about bees, but doing something that's like natural. It's a natural mm-hmm. process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, is Stoked going to end up with things like uh, propolis and uh, we are. royal jelly? We're going to start doing some propolis extraction. So we are going to do it some tinctures, which is good for your throat. Um, propolis actually is when you break it down to its natural Latin, it's um, like city entrance. So the bees use it as a glue to seal up their hive, but then also use it at, at the entrance as almost like a doormat. So they're cleaning their feet with the natural antibodies in the propolis in order so they're not bringing any kind of diseases or, you know, diseases into the hive. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, it's just so cool. It's great Absolutely. getting to talk to you today. Are there aspects of it that um, people would want to hear about that I didn't uh, think to ask you? Um, no, just in terms of, like you said, I mean, we're doing the honey, we're doing the palm, we're hoping to do the propolis. Um, We're going to start this year as well doing um, honeycomb. Mm -hmm. So actually honey in comb, we're going to start. We did it last year, hoping to get some good production, but we also want to like make sure we make it perfect before we offer it as a product to our customers. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I said, the tours as well. We're going to play with some different, I mean, I'm a bearded guy. We're going to start playing with some beard oils and beard balms uh, using wax and propolis and maybe some royal jelly. Uh, you know, there, 
we're so excited for this next season. It's going to, I think this se- this next season is going to be like our, <laughs> not our peak, but we're almost there. We're almost, we're almost to exactly where we want to be. Keep taking your game to the next level. Like exactly. a lot of really good exactly. companies. Yeah. Well, uh, I hope people, um, uh, check out your website just cause it's so well done. It's so vivid and there'll be links in the show notes for people who watch this version, which is the video and audio. And then the blog transcription will have places people can drill down on things that sure. yeah. and you mentioned. I'll definitely link it to our Instagram page and our Facebook as well. Well, thanks a million. It was oh, great getting to yeah, talk to you. <laughs> have a great day. Hey, thanks. You too, David. The <laughs> exists for people to overcome their health challenges and be fully vital. Please consider subscribing, giving us a five-star review if we've earned it, and going to our website podcast tab for any questions or comments you'd like to share with us. Thanks.